You're tired? Not really. Musicians, you have any plans for next week? <laughs> Tell me the truth, my man. You're staying with us next week? I don't like all the drummer look question. He will come, man. He will come. I can no. tell him he will come. Let me see the, all the hands of those that are saying one more week. Raise a hand. All the hands that are saying one more week. All right, pastor is looking now. Pastor, you can look now. You can look now, pastor. Take it in the hands. Let me see the, all the hands that are here. And I want it to be truthful now. Listen to this before you put up a hand. All those that are saying not another week. Raise your hand. Not another week. Finish on Sabbath. If you're saying finishing on Sabbath, raise your hand. One, two. Finish on Sabbath. Check our down from now. Pastor, if it, since the church believes in demo, right, democracy, and we're a church who likes to vote Elder Hay. Elder Hay, I don't like the way you look, you know. Elohi, we tell you, we're not trouble a harvest, man. You'll be all right, man. You'll be all right. If I say you'll be all right, believe me, you'll be all right. Pastor, uh, 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 but, but guess what happened? Anywhere the hand go, the money need to go too. That's right. Am I right, Pastor? Yes. So, so Sabbath, when I come here, and I ask for those who want another week, now make sure when you raise a hand, I see some $5,000 going up with a hand, you know. Look at you. Oh, yeah. You're not even saying anything. Yeah. And if it is not five, you know the thing now, Hello, They have a bill now with $2,000, one of them. Oh, yeah. So make sure I see the 2000 You understand? Yeah. So, so tonight is Tuesday night. So I am giving you a warning, a warning. from tonight. <laughs> from tonight, amen? So, 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 so if you need to go to the bank, to the machine, to start draw from now. Because some of you want to draw so much. You can't draw it one time. Start drawing from tonight. Hello? Start drawing from tonight. And by the way, we will tell you maybe Thursday night. If we should go another week. How much it will cost us. How that sound? Amen. You're never talking to me man. You want to hear it? So that you can go to the bank. Friday, hello, oh, yeah. or call up your friends Friday overseas and say, listen to me, send a hundred dollars for the campaign. Hello, somebody. Oh, yeah. So we'll tell you that on Thursday night so you can know, and then we'll ask them to send a little extra for Elder Hay Harvest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Elder Hay, no feel no way, man. You're Chris, man. You're Chris. You're Chris. And if Wayne tell me that him Chris, we're Chris. Weston, by the way, I need to talk with you too. You don't have the plan. because He's key in this thing, you know. Because if he decided to Ella Pearson, well, I can't go. We have to get another sound. <laughs> Amen. Tonight is going to be nice. Tonight is going to be nice. We'll be finishing before 8.30. 8.30. Tonight we're talking about but if not, but if not. Now, outside of pastor, if anybody can give me the book, the chapter, and the verse where these words are from, I'll ask Elder Reed to give a gift tomorrow night. In 10 seconds. But if not, come on, what are you looking at Google boy? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Where? Ooh. This man I hear me say, you know. We, we passed 10 already. But if not, Daniel chapter 3, and you'll find it in verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image 
which thou hast set up. Tonight we're talking about, but if not, will you stand with us? Will you stand with us as we sing this beautiful song, as we get ready for the word tonight? Will you stand with us as we sing our meditation song, our meditation song? Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Welcome to all our visitors. I don't know if you're having the first time us tonight, but I'm really hoping that all our visitors here, you've been following us since we've begun, so you can know exactly where we are in these sermons. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Celebrate your goodness towards all of us tonight. We are thankful for still holding back the winds of strife. We are happy that in these last days, you are sealing our people to go home with you. Thank you for sending this tent here in Montego Bay for this time to save the remnants down here. 
We pray, blessed Savior, you'll be pleased to step on this platform again. Be pleased to touch my brain cells. Place in there inspiration. Exalt your word tonight. May a word come alive. May somebody see Jesus. May somebody hear Jesus speak in such a powerful manner. Speak your truth and may souls be drawn to you and accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray until thanks. Amen. But if not, as we read the Bible, look at God's people from the Old Testament through the New Testament in the dark ages as we read Sister Linton, as we study God's word, we discovered that all of God's people, before we enter the pearly gates, we all must go through something. It will not be an easy road. In fact, I can tell you that the road to heaven is not a bed of roses. Trials will be there. And if you want to put more to it, you can say crosses will be there. And listen to me now. We are in the last days. I told you before that anybody, any person that is planning to be saved, you've got to know that you will have to make up for yourself the most difficult decision you can ever make. Because why? The devil is ensuring that to accept our Lord and Savior, it will not be easy. Are you listening to me, somebody? Understand, you'll have to find yourself pushing yourself, pushing yourself through, pushing yourself through the mouth talking of friends. You'll have to push yourself through the mouth talking of relatives. You've got to push yourself. You've got to make decisions that folk are not really expecting you to make in order to be saved. Are you listening to me, somebody? You've got to surprise the devil because the devil has set your life in such a way that the only thing you can say when Christ sent the gospel to you is that I am not ready. My, my life is tied up, but you've got to have a made mind to let the devil know that though your life is tied up, though it is wrapped up and tangled up, you've got to let him know as difficult as it may be, I am going to say yes to Jesus. The song says it's not an easy road. No, it's not an easy road. And listen to me, it is not only folk on the outside are experiencing challenges. You've got to know that even us on the inside, we're dealing with serious challenges. The devil's intention is to ensure that all of us get back on his side. But our minds are made up. 
our minds are made up. We have declared that the hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. Understand, our mind is already made up. That victory is already ours and we are just there to cross the finishing line just to claim our prize. We know the story in Daniel chapter 3. And this is one passage in the Bible. When you read it, you understand that God's words are true. When God says, closer than a brother, I am to you. You see its truthfulness in this passage. When God says, when it pass through in, in Isaiah 43 and verse 2, when God says, when it pass through the waters, it will not overflow thee. And through the rivers, it will not get it down. And through the fires, you shall not be burned. You see the truthfulness in this passage. I listen to me, somebody. God wants all of us to know that every now and then, Sister Bella and Fante will experience some stuff. But understand the water that you may be experiencing, you've got to know it is not a same situation. It is just a passing through situation. We all will experience fiery trials, but understand you are not in the fire to stay. It is just a passing through experience. Come on and say, middle there. So if you are going through something right now, I come to tell you that you will not always be in it. Come on, if you're going through some fiery trials, I come by to tell you that listen to me, it will not destroy you. If you're going through some watery flood experience, I'm here to tell you it's not going to overflow you. I'm here to tell you that Daniel's God surely will deliver. So the story tells us that the king of Babylon decided that he wanted to see the power of God. And the way he decided how he wanted to do it, he got a, a dream in Daniel chapter 2 where God showed to him this huge image. The image head was of gold, the chest and arms of silver, the thigh and legs of brass, and the, le and the feet of iron and clay. God showed Nebuchadnezzar through Daniel's interpretation to him that Babylon was represented by that head of gold. God also told Daniel in a dream to tell, or as he explained it to Daniel, to let Nebuchadnezzar know that his kingdom would not last forever. Though gold is superior. Give me some top on the monitors alone. Some top on the monitors. Though gold is superior to silver, bronze, and iron. I listen to me. God told him, although Babylon is in, is in its splendor. Though its gardens hung in its garden was one of the seven wonders in the world. Although all of that magnificent in beauty. Understand that your kingdom will not last forever and neither will you, Nebuchadnezzar, flesh and blood will not last forever. You will only serve for a time. Babylon is only here for a time. And so King Nebuchadnezzar decided that, listen to me, I am going to show God that I am in charge. He showed me an image. Well, I am going to make an image. And the image will be all gold. 
understand and also I will do in something. I want the folk not only in my territory, but folk in other nations, folk that speaks other language. I want dignitaries to come and celebrate with me to let folk understand that I am in charge, that I am the boss and what I say goes. Are you listening to me, somebody? And so what the brother did, he, 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 he had his guys skillfully putting an image together. They built a head, they built arms, they built feet, they built all the stuff. But understand, with all the mouth they built in it, that image couldn't speak. With all the air they built on it, that image couldn't hear. With all the hands that they built on it, understand, the image couldn't touch with the, infirm with the feelings of her infirmities. With all the feet that they built for it, it couldn't walk. I listen to me, somebody. And by the way, God did say in his commandments that we should not make unto thee, unto yourself, any graven image or anything in the likeness of heaven or the earth. Neither should you bow to them nor worship them. Are you listen to me? Now understand, in the Babylonian kingdom, my friends, there are all sort of folk, including some folk, that big boss Nebuchadnezzar he went into Jerusalem and he managed by siege to capture some of God's people he pulled some strong young men he pulled some educated men he pulled some that he saw that the wisdom of God was in them and he placed them in high authority he placed them in position he put them in charge he gave them power over some that were there in Babylon this big bad bull Nebuchadnezzar he also pulled take uh, he took some of God's holy vessels from God's holy temple and he carried them there in Babylon are you listening to me somebody understand I want to tell you something that though Nebuchadnezzar did all of that elevation you want to know that God had his eyes on him there is nothing a king can do. There is nothing a prime minister can do. There is nothing a president can do that God doesn't see. Come on, somebody. It is that only the eyes of the people that are looking on him. You've got to know the eyes of God that runs to and through the earth. He's looking at everybody. And God was paying attention on Nebuchadnezzar. Are you listening to me, somebody? Can I tell you, not only was God paying attention to me, Nebuchadnezzar, Brother Bell and Fante, but God had a plan to save him. In fact, in fact, in Daniel chapter 2 dream, God gave Nebuchadnezzar a little insight of what his son looked like. Oh. Understand, when God reveals some stuff to you, you ought to know it is not by chance. <laughs> hey, listen to me, somebody. Sometimes God shows us some revelation. And then later on, he explains it to us. Sometimes God gives to us some things. And it baffles us. But later on, you'll understand the meaning of it. Hey, listen to me. And so this Nebuchadnezzar, if the image was ready... Built by men. Understand, he decided to put it in the plains of Jura. High, wide, powerfully built. He placed there where everybody could see it. Understand, it was in everybody's full vision. Clear, nobody could say they couldn't see it. It was right there before their very eyes. See, my friends, the invitation going out. Invitations to this country. Invitation to that country. Invitations to high and lofty men and women. Invitations to privileged people. Understand, they are all invited to the dedication of Nebuchadnezzar's image because Nebuchadnezzar must prove to the world how powerful Babylon is 
he must prove to the world how mighty he is. But understand, he didn't know that God had a plan for him. Understand, there's a song that says, while man a plan, God a wipe out. I listen to me. Sometimes we are making some move, but you don't even know that your move, it is God's strategic move also. Sometimes, sometimes, God appears silent through all our planning committees. Sometimes, God appears silent when we are in the dark doing our things. Hey, listen to me. He appears silent when you're planning for sting and reggae sunflesh. He appears silent when you're planning putting plans together for your party. But understand, God not You've got to understand, though he is plain silent, doesn't mean he is not paying attention. He knows all that's taking place on this land. You've got to know this is still my father's world. You've got to know the God that we serve, the God that owns this planet, is not an absentee landlord. He's interested in everything. That takes place down here. And so they all gathered. Read it when I get some time to this dedication. The instruction was we have our music, we have Dulcima, we have Sabbath. We have all kind of music here. We are going to play the music. And the minute you hear the sound of the music, every dignitaries must bow. Every nation must bow. Understand that every tongue must bow. If you don't understand this speech, then you'll hear the music. Once you hear the music, just bow. Now, it is interesting to note that with this Instruction came a threat. We're heading somewhere, but if not. With this instruction, there was a threat. In verse 6, it says, And whoso falleth not down, and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. <laughs> now, you've always read this passage, but I'm certain there's something inside there you've never paid attention to. Hey, Ooh, this is sweet. Hey, I'm the one preaching. Wait on me, please. Pastor Sunlin, when Nebuchadnezzar sent the invitation out, he didn't tell them, Ella Pearson, that they were coming. To worship an image. <laughs> the invitation was just come and celebrate this dedication. But here, after all gathered, and they were all on spot. 
listening to the command. A threat was made, Ella Vernon. If you don't bow in worship to the image, you are going to die. And I can just imagine, allow me to take my time to say this, that those that were there, they just realized that they were trapped. It's a perfect trap. They had no idea when they got the invitation to join in this dedicated service that Nebuchadnezzar would set a death trap for them. Their only intention was we got this invitation to come to the dedication and so we're going to celebrate with Sir Nebuchadnezzar. But now Nebuchadnezzar, like a beast, like a lamb-like beast, is now adding something to his word. They realize it was not just an invitation to a dedicated service. It was a life and death matter. Can I tell you, sometimes we find ourselves in some situation at the beginning it wasn't seen, it didn't come on to us as a death trap. When you're in it, that's when you realize it's a death trap. You know, I read something in Revelation that sounds like something like that is coming again. Revelation. Revelation tells us that something like that is coming again. Revelation 13 and verse, I'll read for you verses 15, 16, and 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Death trap. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You are here this week, last week, when I explained how Sunday worship came about. You were here last week when I explained to you and showed to you from the Bible and history, my friends, what the beast, who the beast is. I've shown to you also what is his mark. I've showed you through Bible prophecy and history that the Roman Catholic system, that is the beast power of Revelation 13. Am I right, somebody? Have shown to you also that according to the Bible and the speech from the beast's own mouth, it says that Sunday worship is his mark. 
of authority. In other words, Sunday worship is the mark of the beast. Let me tell you this here. Many folk tonight who have started churches around the world, some powerful men, some powerful women, most of them found it more convenient to worship on Sunday, not knowing that the beast has set up a death trap for them. The beasts at the start says that we are using Sunday as a holiday. And then they said, let's turn it into a holy day. And then they says, we will do so because Jesus resurrected on Sunday. But God didn't ask anybody to keep Sunday holy. God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's God's day. Sunday is the beast day. I've shown to you also from the beast's own mouth that they are pressing for the observance of Sunday right across the world. They are pushing for it. We see the agenda. Hey, listen to me, somebody. They are working in some smart ways. They are saying that Sunday should be used now as a day for the family, a day of rest and worship. But God says that Sabbath is my day of rest, worship. The devil has a death trap. Can I tell you? In Daniel chapter 3, God had some young men there. In every situation, God always have a witness. In every situation, God always has somebody that will stand up for holiness. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for Bible principle. Stand up on the promises of God. Stand up on what God says. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were there as God's representative. I want to believe that there are other Jews there also. My friends, when you read through, Sister Essen, these three young men, including Daniel, they were placed in high position in Babylon. They were placed in authority. But I can tell you this here. Their relationship with their God was more important than their position in Babylon. Their relationship with God and his word was more important. They were more tied to God's day, to God's way, to God. Understand more than tied to position. The problems we have down here. They are folk. They are more tied up with position. Tied up with authority. They are tied up with man. But the time has come when we've got to tied up with God. All of us, all of us, all of us, all of us. At some point, our relationship with God will be tested. Allow me to drop a bomb right now. I see some powerful Christians around. Some, they like them to be their chest. And to say how long they've been advanced. I go drop a bomb inside of here. They like to beat their chest to say how long they've been baptized. I listen to me and to tell you how much 
they have done for the Lord. Tell you how much they have sung for the Lord. I'll go jump a bomb inside this place. I don't know the tent is going to be empty. The tent is going to be silent. They boast about how good their relationship is with the Lord. But can I tell you, it's all mouth talk. It's all mouth talk. The robber is about to hit the road. You don't tell me you will stand in persecution when you're still struggling to take the toe to polish off your nails. Uh, I said, you don't tell me that you're able to run with the horse man when you're struggling with the footman. Some issues that you're battling with. Hello, somebody. You're fighting this. Ellen White say that the servant of God and you are finding every reason to rebut it. Look at the way you're looking at me. You know what God says about worldly adornment. We are more into fashion than anything else. And can I tell you, God knows that some of our praises, they are just empty and meaningless. God knows that some of our worship, they are only programs. They are not spiritual. We only sing because we can sing. We only preach because we can preach. We only play music because we can play. But we don't have a relationship with God. But I tell you, the robber is about to meet the road. I'll go drop a bomb on some preachers right now. In my church, once upon a time, some of my preachers in my Adventist church would preach about it. Would tell you to take all the nail polish. Tell you to take all the jewelry. Tell you what the Bible says about it. But because a wife is doing it, you're silent. Your children, they're in the makeup, but you're silent. But it's time to lift up your voice like a trumpet. Sound an alarm. Get the people of God ready. And then come tell me, but you're preparing for persecution. You ain't preparing for nothing. Because already these things are wearying you. Look at your face already. Look at the way you're looking at me. You are still hiding and committing fornication. You are still committing adultery. You are still lying. You are still a cheater. You've got to get right with God. You are still teeth in JPS light. You've got to get it right. But tell us something. I've been telling you. The truth is hard. But understand people that hell is going to be hot. Hello somebody. We can't come to God in this kind of way. We need to have a relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, man, when the word of God comes to you, it will be no problem for you to dress right. To live for Jesus. So, so when, come on, behave yourself. I need to finish by 8.30. Behave yourself. 
Behave yourself. So they, they, they sounded the trumpet. They sounded the trumpet. And can I tell you, dignitaries bow who didn't know better. Hello, somebody. I said those who got invitations bow. But it is surprising to know that with all the other Jews that were there, only Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego stood firm. What happened to the others? Let me tell you something. The time is coming when it is those that have a binding relationship with God will be known. Will be known. So some folk were in the place and uh, they were Nebuchadnezzar's watch guards and they discovered brother Henry wake up you can't sleep inside this place here they discovered that three didn't bow And there were not just any three. Ella Pearson is helping to preach. He said captives. In other words, they were not born Babylonians. Not only that. They decided to carry the news to Nebuchadnezzar. This is how they presented the news. Nebuchadnezzar, you gave three men high position. And if anybody should ever have your back, it should be them. These three men, they're not just any and anybody. They are in high positions, respectable positions. So if they are showing you no regard, then king, I can tell you, the others not long from now will disregard you. So he said that they are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the king heard their names, in fact, these were not even their real name. <laughs> but when he heard their names, that they didn't bow, he was in a rage. Who they think they were, that I gave a command for them to bow, and they decided not to bow, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Because if I give a command, everybody should follow it. No one is exempt. Sounds like revelation again. So they were brought to the king. The king said, okay, I heard that you guys didn't bow. But because I like you and I, 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 I want to believe my guys, but I want to see for myself. We are going to sound the music again to give you another chance at it. And I tell you, if you bow before all these people, <laughs> this is sweet. Pastor, I should preach this on a Sabbath man when I can't preach for a hour. He said that with all these people watching you, you will bow. 
But let it be known, O Tuck Shop, that if you choose not to bow, you, as much as you have these positions and you're loved by many people, just know that the fire will be a destiny. Now, 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 now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <laughs> they realize that this is a big show for God. <laughs> Dr. Belenfante, I'm giving you a sermon. And Sister Lynch, work on it. Nebuchadnezzar thought, Ella Pearson, this was going to be his show. What he didn't know was that God was planning his show. God wanted the world to know how a powerful God he is. God wanted to give a testimony to those Jewish people. So God brought people from everywhere to come and see how powerful he is. He brought nations, Pastor Sunlin, from everywhere to come and see this, to come and see how great is our God. How mighty is it? So Shadrach, Meshach, had a bed to go. They had done already, had a conversation with the father about this. And I believe when they went there, they were singing, I must have the Savior with me, <laughs> for I dare not walk alone. I must go without a murmur. So come what may, they were ready for it. Come on, somebody. They were ready for it. And I believe, I believe that while Nebuchadnezzar was there talking and saying stuff, I believe that those brothers were saying, God, is your time now. Your time now. And, 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 and he heard, he heard, he heard that Nebuchadnezzar had said that the, 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 the furnace must be heated seven times hotter. I don't know if Nebuchadnezzar didn't know that seven is God's number. When he mentioned the name seven with the furnace, the Holy Ghost jumped in it. Tell somebody. And, 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 and uh, the AC unit was on for those three boys. Come on, somebody. You see, what is fire for some people, it is AC for God's people. Come on, somebody. It is AC for God's people. So, so what Nebuchadnezzar didn't know was that God is already in the fire. And while in the fire, he was just waiting for his church to step in the fire. Because it's going to be a Holy Ghost time. Come on, somebody. When the church is in the fire, then the church must get on fire for the Lord. Come on, somebody. More fire, more power. So he's in the fire. And I believe that Jesus was there walking around and saying, bring it on, Nebuchadnezzar. Bring it on. Bring it on. It's showtime. Bring it on. And so it was no time for the boys to respond. And I believe they said, you don't need to, to set up the musicians. They don't need to sound anything. In fact, uh, in fact, you can think that we are disrespectful, but, but, but we want to know that we are not even going to be careful the way this come out to you. 
we are not mindful of how it will sound to you. We understand the position you are in, but, but you've got to understand when the law clashes with, with, with God's law, the Bible says we ought to obey God rather than man. Come on, somebody. We respect the laws of the land, but, but now you are in conflict with God's law. God says, I shouldn't bow to that thing over there, and I'll not address it as God. It is a thing over there. I'll stand up for God. And somebody says, if you stand up for God, uh, God will stand up for you. Some of us want proof before we step into the fire. Don't wait for proof. Step in the fire and then you'll get the proof. So they said to him, our God, whom we serve, they were speaking with one voice, longing for the day when my church will come together and speak with one voice. Come on, some of us can't be saying this and some saying that. We ought to come in oneness. We ought to come in unity. Come on, somebody. The churches across the world need to draw together with one voice and say the Bible says we can't go outside of what God's word says. Come on somebody. Because at the end of the day, this will determine where we spend our long eternity. So they said, our God, our God, our God, whom we serve, he's able. He's able. He's able. Perhaps you've never read it, Nebuchadnezzar, but let me give you a testimony. Our God pulled our people from Egypt. Our God pulled them across the Red Sea. Perhaps you've never heard, oh Nebuchadnezzar, that our God caused our people to cross River Jordan. Come on, somebody. Perhaps you've never known, oh, I never heard it, but our God caused our people to march around Jericho and the wall came down. Perhaps you want some more Nebuchadnezzar? Well, Nebuchadnezzar, that's their testimony. It's our time to have our own testimony. So, so, so send on the fire. Send it on. But let it be known. He's got power to deliver us. But if he chooses not to devour, not to deliver, if he chooses by choice to let us die, let it be known, we shall die on the side of God. We shall die on the side of truth. We shall die trusting God. Our minds are made up. We shall die with Jesus in our hearts. Whatever the outcome may be, our minds are made up. All the way, my Savior leads me. And so, they tied them up. Strong men tied them up. And they didn't need to do that because they had no plans to run away from the fire. We're going through the fire. They had no plans to run away. Savor with them. Come on, musicians, we need to finish this thing. And so, they're tied up. And their faces are not looking like they want anybody to sorrow for them. When you're serving the Lord, you ought to look happy. You have some folk because you're going through some things. Everybody see like the world tumbling down on you. You're going through something for the Lord. You ought to look happy. Happy, happy, happy. Let folk wonder. How is it you're going through such things and you're still happy? Let them know that God is with you. Come on, somebody say, you must be happy. And so they're going in the fire and Jesus is waiting for them. What is interesting is that those strong men that they had to throw them in the fire, just the heat from the fire. <laughs> that heat was not Nebuchadnezzar's heat. That heat was God's heat. 
You've got to know that man, sinners, cannot stand God's heat. You got to get out of the way. 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 We don't have time to get into that. And so, in their minds, if the heat alone killed the strong man, then at least the heat should have also killed Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But pastor, this story is nice because look at it. The heat done already killed the servants. Shadrach and Meshach, Abednego, they have enough reasons to say I'm not going in there. But the boys are humbling themselves. You want us in the fire? In the fire we shall go. And so they are still walking in the fire. They walked in the fire by themselves. Now, I am not so certain what their reaction was like. To know that they are in the flames they are not feeling hot. They are not sweating. The only thing that is burned from them was the Babylonian cords that were used to tie them up. So they are loosed in the fire. I can just imagine where the musicians are. The type of praise and worship that was taking place in the fire. I can just imagine the singing, the shouting, and the praising of God was going on in the fire. Hold on, man. Have you ever been going through some stuff? I need to finish, man. And even while you're going through it, you are saying to yourself, but how many are dead yet? I need some worshipers in this place. Come on, man. I need some worshipers. I, I have some folk in here not talking the truth, man. It has never happened to you. You are going through some stuff, Sister Linton. And in the midst of it, you are wondering, I'm supposed to be dead. And I'm, I'm talking to those in line. I'm supposed to be dead. And here I am. I'm not even feeling any pain. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. When we say out here that God is good, we know what we're talking about. I have been through stuff. In the midst of it, I'm wondering, am I really still alive? But then I know because I'm still alive. It's not my power that's keeping me. It's the Holy Ghost that's keeping me. Come on, somebody. I realize it must be the hand of God upon me. I know some of you know what I'm talking about because right now you are going through some stuff and folk are wondering how is it you are still alive. You are still alive because God is still powerful. God is still a way maker. So 
some of us going through some stuff right now, the pressures should have wiped us out. But we're still here. There are some of you have some bills keep mounting up. Those bills, the pressures of those bills should have caused your blood vessels in the head to be burst. But you're still here. God is awesome. Come on and say amen out there. I listen to me somebody. I listen to me somebody. Wave your hand and just praise the Lord in the house here. Wave the hand here and just magnify the Lord. So, I tell you all of that to tell you this. That the mark of the beast is coming. But God's people need not to worry. Come on somebody. The threats are being made. Yes, the death threats are being made. And understand, understand, they have already put things in place to kill some of the four God's people that will stand for God. But we will not worry. We stand to say, but if not, we will still remain on the side of God. We will not bow. Not bow. So, so Western, every little decision I make to follow God and follow truth is just strengthening me to make the big decision not to bow to the beast. Every time some little temptations come, and I stand and say, no, I'm not going to do it. Come on, somebody. It strengthened me to stand up against the mark of the beast. So God calling you to surrender to him. God is saying, come. I want to give you strength. I want to give you courage so that when that time comes to run with the harsh men, you'll be able to run. But what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing is that folk are saying, God, I don't need your strength. When that time comes, I'll be able to run in my own strength. Look what happened to the servants. The very heat killed them. If you're not on the side of God, my friends, understand some things will just blow your way. You need to come on the side of God. So tonight, I'm wondering, if there's one person here who'd like to make a little decision tonight. A little decision to say, Lord, I'm not yet surrendered to you, but I want to change sides. I want to come on your side. Or if you're here tonight, you're saying, Lord, I've not yet accepted the Bible Sabbath. I know it is true. I've not yet joined the remnant church that you shared with us. I want to be on the side of truth. Begin to make those decisions. And as time passes by, you make bigger decisions so you can stand in the face of the beast, stand up for God. Parents, let the children begin to make these little decisions. Build them so that when time comes and if you should be taken away from them, you know you can rest assured while you're breathing your last breath that they will stand on the side of God. So give them to Jesus from now. The Bible says that children, children will be marked as well. So give them to Jesus from now. God bless you. God, put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. God bless you. God, come on, come on, shake my hand. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Come on, my friend. Come on, God bless you. Come on. Yes, come on, come, come on, shake my hand. Come on, shake my hand. Come on, shake my hand, too. Come on. Come on, God bless you. God bless you. They are servants of God. Come on and say amen. So, friends, 
have brought their friends to Jesus tonight. So they are saying that we'll stand together when the going gets rough. I'll be by your side. I'm asking the church to stand. You know, these are a new couple. They got baptized on Sabbath. And already they begin to lead people to Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? I'm asking some other Adventist to lead somebody to Jesus tonight. I'm asking some more friends to bring their friends to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Even if tonight is your first night, you're saying, Preacher, I too want to make that little decision. I want to stand on the side of God. I want to stand on the side of truth. I'm inviting you to come tonight. Come quickly. 8.30 is gone and I must finish by 8.30. So come quickly. The time is going. I don't know what song you have to sing. The but have they say, come quickly. Come quickly. I must pray for you. Come quickly. I must pray for you. And send you home. Friends, bring your friends to Jesus quickly. I must pray for them. And send you home. You're on the outside. Come quickly. I must pray for you. You must build your faith. You must build some strength. You must Amen. build some muscles in God from now. So come. Come on down quickly. Make that little decision. Make that little decision. So when time comes for you to make that big decision, you'll able to make that big decision. Come on, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. And listen, God stood up for them. In fact, when Nebuchadnezzar pulled them back, called them out from the fire, you know what happened? He promoted them. He gave them a higher position. You see, you can't beat God's giving. You stand up for God, he'll stand up for you. You're saying, preacher, if I accept God and the Sabbath, if I do what is right, then I'll lose my job. Who tell you that? Give Jesus a chance and see what God might do for you. In fact, perhaps that job that you are protecting, God has something better for you anyway. Don't limit yourself. Give God a chance and see what God will do for you. So they're singing and you're coming forward. Come on quickly. You're coming. You're coming. Come on. Come quickly. Come on quickly. Don't wait to see who else is coming. They're singing. They're beginning to sing. Come on quickly. God bless you. If you're on the outside, please come. You're on the in Even if you've been coming each night to this altar, here is a new night. Here is a new night. It is almost at the end of November. Come on, march on down for Jesus. God bless you. Come on quickly. He's waiting. He's waiting to enter. Perhaps all the other nights you've been saying not yet. Perhaps all the other nights you have been saying some of the time. Perhaps all the other nights you've been saying I'm not yet ready. Let tonight be the night when it's the Lord. I'll choose you now. I'll choose to be on the right side. I'll choose to be on your team. Sing and come. Even if it is the first night, it's a good time to say, Lord, I'm so glad I've had this encounter with you. So sing and come time after time. Time after time. He has waited before. Come quickly. And now, and now he is waiting again. He is, waiting again. is it you he's waiting for? Is it you he's waiting for to see, to see if you're willing? You're God bless you, my sister. To open the door. You've got to make a strong decision. Maybe they're saying there's some stuff in my way. There are many things in my way you are saying as I sing softly. But listen to me. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego had to make a tough decision. And it was worth it. It was worth it. Tonight, he's calling up on you to make a tougher decision. Maybe it's a relationship situation you're in. You've got to make a tough decision. You can remain in it and run the risk of being eternally lost. You can stay in it, my friends, and run the risk.
midst of losing your salvation. Yes, that's your choice. I give you another minute to come and then I'll pray time of the time. Come on quickly. Time of the time. He's waited before. And now he's waiting. He's waiting on this Tuesday night to see to see on this Tuesday night if you are willing to open the door. I don't usually do this. I had other plans. But just now the Lord says that I need to pray. I don't usually do this. I had other plans. But whatever he'll impress me to say, I'll say it. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. things. Oh, yes, Lord. These eyes shed many tears. Not only for myself. These eyes have shed many tears for persons I've preached to who didn't choose serve you and I had to bear it there this body many experiences stand in the grave side of many and even while Clearing ash to ash and dust to dust. The tears streamed down, knowing that I buried a soul to a Christless grave. I don't know why I'm feeling this way tonight same thing will happen after this campaign is over. Don't know who it is. Don't know who it is. Jesus, you are God. And if anybody should die and their soul should be lost, nobody's fault but theirs I don't know why I'm feeling this way tonight but somebody God 
is running a serious risk. Somebody's playing a dangerous game. Don't know who it is. The person is right here. Sweet God, if you can do just one more thing for that soul, I'm asking you not to hold back from doing it. In Jesus' name. And these are the altar. I present them to you. Even in their situation, you are still calling them. You knew they were in it before you called, but you're still calling them. You, their situation is not preventing you from calling them to save them. I pray God that good sense will prevail tonight. The Bible teachers will visit them tomorrow. They'll reason with them. May good sense, oh God, I don't know what that I smell, but sweet Holy Ghost pass by here again. Pass by here again. May your anointing fall upon these, your members. Those that are not right with you, God. You've organized this campaign for them, blessed Jesus. Those in adultery, they know it. You're calling them to make the surrender. Those in fornication, they know it. You're calling them Jesus. Save you like a shepherd. Lead us, I pray. Take us home safely. This we pray. But if not, God, if not, if not, we will die on your side because our minds are made up. If we live not to come back down here tomorrow night, our minds are made up to go all the way with you. In Jesus' name. As you go tonight, you have an obligation of the Lord. Make that decision to follow the Savior. You have an obligation of the Lord. Time is running out. Don't allow Sabbath to pass. This is a command from your God. You must make that commitment. God bless you as you go. Have a good night's rest. Have a good night's rest. We'll make up for these 15 minutes some other night. God bless you. To see. The Seventh-day Adventist Church Harrison invites all to its annual Harvest Thanksgiving service under the theme, Seasons Change But God Is Good. 
on Sabbath, December 9th, starting at 9.15 a.m. sharp. Featuring Kerry Sales, His, Crystalite Singers, Testify, Dave Gale, Karim Russell, and a host of other music ministers. With guest speaker, Pastor Neil Brevet, a special blessing awaits. Island, give your face a rest. Island, give your face a rest. Island, give your face a rest. Smile. The Seventh-day Adventist Church Harrison invites all to its annual Harvest Thanksgiving service under the theme, Seasons Change But God Is Good. On Sabbath, December 9th, starting at 9.15 a.m. sharp. Featuring Kerry Sales, His, Crystalite Singers, Testify, Dave Gale, Karim Russell, and a host of other music ministers. With guest speaker, Pastor Neil Brevet, a special blessing awaits. Island, 